Welcome to the lecture 5 part 2. Uh, so today you learned about solving equations and solving different types of equations and I hope these uh, further examples will help you out doing the homework, uh, doing the web assigned homework and also uh, further in the exam. So, um, so the first question type we start is rational equations. So uh, let us try to solve uh, some rational equations. So remember, you would first try to factor the denominators to find the least, uh, least common denominator. So factor and find uh, the LCD. OK, now let's, uh, let's have, let us factor here. And you can see easily that it's difference of 2 squares 2 times. And that would be here, x minus 2, x plus 2. And here again x minus 2, x plus 2. And the last denominator is just x plus 2. Don't do anything to the numerator. Just write it down. 2x and 4 here and 3 here. So all you did was factor it. And you can now see the least common denominator is just um, x minus 2 times x plus 2. So you would multiply both sides of the equation by x minus 2, x plus 2. You can do it two ways. Either you just multiply the whole side of the equation or you can multiply each term. Now I'm going to write down it in the correct order. I'm going to multiply each side. So x minus 2, x plus 2. And here again, x minus 2, x plus 2. OK. Now, you would have to distribute on the right-hand side because there are more than one term in the right-hand side. Uh, on the left-hand side, uh, there's just one term, but I will just keep it because sometimes you might have more than one term in both sides. So let's write down the distribution step uh, just to avoid errors. Okay, so 2x, x minus 2, x plus 2 times the new factor x minus 2 x plus 2 here and on this side you have 4 over x minus 2 x plus 2 um, times the least common denominator x minus 2 x plus 2 and then lastly minus 3 over x plus 2 times x minus 2 x plus 2 OK, now you can see how things cancel off and feel free to cancel things off right here. These two and these two, these two and these two and here only this one. OK, so remember by this step, once you finish this step, there should no more be there should be no more fractions. OK, and you see in here you get 2x on the right hand side and on the left hand side, you just get 4 minus 3 times x minus 2. Now, multiply everything so you get 2x equals 4 minus 3x minus 3 times negative 2 is plus 6. Okay, so um, again, be careful when you have a multiplication by a negative sign. Um, and let's uh, add 3x to both sides. Okay. And then you have um, 5x on this side. And here on the right-hand side, you get 10. So you end up having x equals 2. Now, I just um, mentioned in class that you will have to check the domain first. Now, I just uh, I actually forgot that in this example. So you would just remember this. You need to check the domain. Okay, and you can see from the original equation, x cannot be plus 2 or x cannot be minus 2. So x cannot be plus 2 and x cannot be minus 2. You don't have to write it in interval notation, just write what x cannot be. Now, now when you compare this right here, x cannot be 2. But the only answer that we can get, only possible answer is x equals 2, which is not in the domain. 
So let's write it right here. So it's not an answer. So no solutions for the question exist. So in this situation, we would just write empty set. OK, so um, things to be careful. Most uh, first thing is check the domain. First, find the domain of the equation. And at the end, you may need to check the domain. OK, so let's go to the next step. Uh, next uh, example, it's uh, also very similar to the one we just be just uh, just tried. Um, first of all, I'm not going to forget the domain step. So let's factor x minus 4 plus 1 over 4 minus x is equal to 2. And look at the domain of the expression. Well, the zero, the denominators cannot be zero. So the domain is x cannot be zero and x cannot be four from here. <clears throat> so if you get answer zero or four, you can just cross it off because it's not in the domain. And also just uh, note the LCD. Here is x times x minus 4. Now this guy right here looks like 4 minus x. It doesn't. It looks like a different factor. But what you can do here is make this negative, which means you have to change this guy. So minus x becomes plus x, and plus 4 becomes minus 4. Now if you're wondering what just happened, let me just uh, write it down for you here. So you originally had 1 over 4 minus x, OK? Which is the same as <coughs> you can take out a negative 1, and then you will have x, because x times negative 1 is negative x. And then you can have, you have minus 4, because negative 1 times negative 4 is equal to plus 4. So this is true. OK, and then by the rule of science, this can just be negative of x minus 4. And that's what I wrote right here. OK, so um, once you do that, you can just multiply both sides by the least common denominator, which is x times x minus 4 here and x times x minus 4 here. And once you do that, um, do the distribution step. So you need to distribute on the left hand side now. So um, I would write the original rational expression. And in red, I'm going to write the least common denominator minus 1 over x minus 4 times x times x minus 4 and on the other side I just have 2x times x minus 4 okay so now feel free to cancel the things that looks um, cancelling these two cancels off these two cancels off these two cancels off and on the on the right hand side you can actually do the multiplication so you should end up with 4 minus x is equal to 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times negative 4 is minus 8x. So right now, what we see here is a quadratic equation. OK, you can see x squared, x terms, and 4. So you need to bring everything to one side. Uh, so I would have 2x squared minus 8x plus, 8 plus x, that would be minus 7x. And then you bring, to, bring over to the other side, you get this. Now, for some of you, this might take a few more steps, but uh, it's all right. Uh, you should end up with this, um, this quadratic equation. And let's do a factoring here. So I'll do it slowly. 2 times 4 is 8. So I need something that adds to negative 7 and factors of 8 
and that would be minus 8 and plus 1. So I'm going to split the middle to negative 8x plus 1x. So 2x squared minus 8x plus x minus 4 is equal to 0. And then take the common factors here 2x x minus 4 plus 1 times x minus 4 is equal to 0. x minus 4 is a common factor take it out x minus 4 times 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. So that's how you factor it and now you can see we almost solve the quadratic equation the answer you get should be x equals 4 and x equals negative 1 half so what you do is you set this equal to 0 you set this equal to 0 and then solve it uh, at this point you need to check whether the domain is okay the domain says x cannot be 0 and x cannot be 4 we got x equals 4 as an answer so x cannot be 4 therefore this answer goes and all you have is x equals negative 2 so the only answer here is x equals negative 2 negative 1 half only okay so uh, that's about uh, rational equations now you can uh, see on the left hand side of the screen one more question about rational equations i hope you can solve it okay so we also did quadratic equations now um, i think you are already familiar with uh, what quadratic equations are um, so let's uh, let's quickly do these two examples so remember you have to expand things and you have to have it as a standard form and then factor it so make sure you have zero on one side so let's do some filing here x squared plus 3x minus 4x minus 12 is equal to negative 6 add 6 to both sides you end up with x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 0 so you're looking for factors of 6 um, that would uh, add up to negative 1 and that would be negative 3 and plus 2 so you would split the middle to x squared minus 3x plus x plus 2x minus 6 is equal to 0 and then x x minus 3 plus 2 times x minus 3 is equal to 0 <clears throat> so x minus 3 is a common factor now so x minus 3 times x plus 2 is equal to 0 so either x minus 3 is equal to 0 that gives you x equals 3 or x plus 2 is equal to 0 that gives you x equals negative 2 so this is a quadratic equation it's a polynomial you don't have to check the answers once you get it these answers are good so the answers for the quadratic equations are 3 and negative 2 or you can do it like this x is in the set 3 and negative 2 okay and this one right here again it's factoring so uh, also make uh, take everything to one side so I can subtract 10x from both sides and I can write it here. So 3x squared minus 10x plus 7 is equal to 0. So when you, when, when you subtract 10x, you will end up on the right hand side. You can just change the sides. And you're looking for factors of 21. So that it adds up to negative 10 and that would be negative 3 and negative 7 negative 3 times negative 7 is 21 okay so <clears throat> let's uh, let's do the factoring so you would do you would split 
negative 10 next to negative 3x and negative 7x so always go by this way uh, do not try to just uh, open parentheses you might go wrong so most of the time you get it correct but sometimes it can go wrong so uh, if you do it wrong so that is what you have minus 7 times x minus 1 equals 0 so I'm gonna have to go here I guess I would say x minus 1 times uh, 3x minus 7 equals 0 and that would be x equals 1 and x equals 7 thirds and it's a quadratic equation so there's no um, um, you don't have to worry about whether these are actual answers it, it is the actual answers okay and um, let's see how we do it by completing the square so remember in class what we did bring everything over uh, over to one side um, not necessarily this uh, there might be other ways of completing the square so it's it's all right if you if you learn something else in the high school and if it works as long as it's correct it's okay so let's uh, bring this to one side 5x squared minus 2x plus um, minus 1 equals 0 okay and then divide everything by 5 so that you have the coefficient 1 here so 5 5 5 and 0 divided by 5 is just 0 so you get x squared minus 2 fifth of x minus 1 fifth is equal to 0 now we are going to complete the square of this part only so remember the drill it's always x and then whatever the sign between these two terms that is minus and half of this so half of 2 fifth is 1 fifth open the parenthesis squared and always minus this guy squared okay and that would be um, 1 over 25 and then you have this minus 5 here so this is the completion of square step okay 1 fifth squared is 1 over 25 um, and uh, after that it's just simplification so uh, let's go to this step I'm gonna send these two to the other side and that would be x minus 1 fifth squared is equal to 1 over 25 plus 1 over 5 and I can just uh, make the denominator the same by multiplying by 5 and 5 so you get 25 1 plus 5 so that's 6 over 25 x is x minus 1 fifth squared square root of both sides remember plus or minus here 6 over 25 squared so this is very very important and here the square sign vanishes okay and then you add 1 fifth to both sides so you get x equals 1 fifth plus or minus square root of 6 over square root of 25 is 5 so there are two answers x is equal to 1 fifth plus root 6 over 5 or x is equal to 1 fifth minus root 6 over 5 <coughs> now whenever you face a quadratic equation um, uh, you have three options of solving it factoring completing the square and the quadratic equation uh, so let's see how you do the quadratic equation or the quadratic formula uh, to solve a quadratic equation so right here and also uh, again this lecture because there are multiple examples this part two should be a little long and you might have noticed it right now okay now here uh, just make the equation in standard form so you get 6x minus uh, 2x squared equals 3 or um, 2x squared minus 6x um, 3 equals 0 
So how do you go about that? You get 6x minus 2x squared minus 3 equals 0. So change the sign. You get that. Okay. Now, uh, just make sure you know what your constants are. So your a is 2, your b is negative 6, your c is 3. And remember the formula, it's x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so you might need to remember this formula for the, for the homework, for the quiz and for the exam. So um, really important formula right here. Um, okay. Now um, just uh, just plug in the uh, plug into the formula. So you get x equals negative two plus or minus square root of b squared minus four. Okay, negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. <clears throat> so sometimes, it, you know, just, just go slowly. Sometimes it might be a little hard. Um, it's um, It can be, you know, just uh, make sure you get this correct. Plus or minus square root of 36 uh, minus 24 over 4. And that would be 6 plus or minus square root of 12 over 4. And uh, that is 6 plus or minus root 12 is 4 root, 2 root 3 or 4. Or I would say 3 plus or minus 2. 3 plus or minus square root of 3 over 2. So if you want to write it in two un different answers, you get... 3 plus square root of 3 over 2 or x equals 3 minus square root of 3 over 2. Okay, and the other one is perfectly arranged, so you can just um, uh, do the formula a is equal to 1, b is equal to 2, and c is equal to 2. Now here you get x is equal to negative b which is negative 2 plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. But right now you'll see that 2 squared is 4, 4 minus 8 is negative 4. Now this guy right here is not a real number. Which means this um, quadratic equation does not have roots in real numbers. So let's say the solution set, this, uh, it does not exist. So let's say the empty set. Now in the future, um, in lecture 15, you will learn that there's something called an um, imaginary unit and then something called complex numbers. And these are, these are what you call complex numbers. But right now in this lecture or in this exam, you are, uh, you have to just say the um, roots does not, uh, the zeros does not exist. Okay. So. Um, recall that the discriminant is the quantity given by b squared minus 4ac. So in some situations, you can actually look at the quadratic equation. Um, uh, actually, there's a small mistake here. As you might have noticed, the discriminant is given by b squared minus 4ac. It's b squared minus 4ac without the square root. Okay. So make that correction in your notes. There's, it, it's a typo in the in the lecture notes. All right. Now, um, so discriminant determinates uh, what kind of roots does the quadratic equation have. So if the discriminant, let's say this is the discriminant, let's say d. If the discriminant is positive, just greater than zero, 
then it has two real two real solutions or sometimes we say two distinct real solutions if the discriminant is equal to zero just one real solution and if the discriminant is less than zero no real solutions so again in lecture 15 we will learn how to say it in a different way but right now this is what you know okay so let's check the discriminant of this equation and uh, and see uh, how many root does it have so a is equal to 2 b is equal to 8 and c is equal to 8 so b squared minus 4ac is equal to 8 squared minus 4 times 2 times 8 so that would be 64 so 64 minus 64 that would be 0 so it has only one root so in some of those questions we can just ask you how many roots does it have so you don't have to actually solve the equation you just have to check b squared minus 4ac and determine determine how many roots does your equation have all right so uh, again you will see one more question um, and i hope you answered the question correctly All right, now we uh, are on to uh, solving radical equations. Now, remember when you solve radical equations, especially when you have even roots, make sure you check your solutions. So this is one of those equations that you have to check the solutions. And uh, I've, ex I've explained some uh, in some examples in class how to check it, but let's, uh, let's do it again here. So uh, first thing you need to do is have the, uh, have the radical on one side and take everything else to the other side so here you would subtract x subtract x so you get square root of x minus 1 is equal to 3 minus x <coughs> okay now you should uh, you can see that uh, radical is one radical is on the left hand side it's a square root so get to get rid of the square root square both sides now here i'm just going to write freshman's dream alert remember the freshman's dream do not end up writing 9 minus x squared okay you would have to file this or you can use the special product formulas either one of them but just don't try it don't write 9 minus x squared on he, on this side the square root will just go off because it's square root of something squared so just x minus 1 here and here you will get 9 minus 3x minus 3x plus x squared or you get x squared minus 6x plus 9 is equal to x minus 1 now as you can see it's a quadratic equation so let me write it here um, subtract x plus 1 minus x plus 1 to both sides so you end up with x squared minus 7x plus 10 is equal to 0 now we are looking for factors of 10 which adds up to negative 7 that would be minus 5 and minus 2 so x squared minus 5x uh, minus 2x plus 10 is equal to 0 x times x minus 5 minus 2 times x minus 5 is equal to 0 x minus 5 x minus 2 is equal to 0 so you get x equals 5 and x equals 2 so the question is is this the answer and no you have to check it so let's uh, quickly check i'm going to check it right here i have the feeling that i might not have enough uh, space for all these three so let's uh, let's do x equals five how do you check it you substitute it to the left hand side you substitute it to the right hand side and see them see whether they are the same so when you substitute x to the right hand side you end up with 
5 plus square root of 5 minus 1, which is 5 plus square root of 4, which is 5 plus 2, which is 7. On the right hand side, you just have 3, there's nothing to plug in, so it's just 3. And you need to check whether they are the same. Well, they are not the same. So x equals 5 is not an answer. So that's how you check it. And let's check um, x equals 2. Again, left hand side reads as 2 plus square root of 2 minus 1. That would be 2 plus square root of 1. That is just 3. And on the right hand side, nothing to substitute. You just have 3. And both sides, you can plug things in and you get 3. So x equals 2 is the only answer. Okay. So that's how you solve it. So make sure you check it. And sometimes the, uh, it seems like an answer, but it might not be. So these are very good exam questions and probably the most valuable point here is you have to check it. Okay, let's see about the next one. It's a different type of equation. There's no square root. It's like you have a fifth root, but let me just write down the power. So two fifth is equal to three to the power two. Why three to the power two? You will see in the next step. Now, remember in the class we did one of these questions. So the idea was to have the power of reciprocal of this. So that would be 5 over 2. And you do the same thing to the other side. And because you are multiplying with the reciprocal, well, you are taking the power, which is the same as in exponent, you just multiply these two. So that cancels off. And that cancels off, so you end up with 2x minus 1. And here, that cancels off, and you get 3 to the power 5. And right now, it might take you a few moments to calculate what 2 to the 3 to the power 5 is. It's 243, 2x minus 1, and so you get 2x equals 244, or x is equal to 122. Okay, and um, you can plug it in and check whether it works. Should work. But uh, one more thing is when you have radical equations with odd roots, you don't need to check. So because this is a fifth root, you have you don't have to check. Uh, but if you want to be sure about whether you know plugging whether you should plug in or not or let's try to plug in and solve if you're just unsure but make just remember that if it's an odd root and you're solving a radical equation you don't have to check it so the equation right now right here number three it's a little complicated example than what we did in class but you can still see the same method works first try to bring one of the radicals to the other side. So you have only one radical on the left hand side. So you get radical of 3x plus 1 is equal to 2 plus radical of x minus 1. Now you need to square both sides. Remember again freshman's dream alert. Okay, uh, because you have to um, file this. Okay, so let me just file it. So 2 plus root x minus 1 times 2 plus root x minus 1. That would be, and here the square root would cancel off with this uh, square, so you get 3x plus 1. So on this side you get 4 plus root x minus 1 plus root x minus 1 plus x minus 1. <coughs> So, uh, you're going to end up with 3x plus 1 is equal to 4 plus x minus 1. That would be 3 plus x plus 2 times square root of x minus 1. And that's what you're going to end up with. Uh, 
I would bring all the non-radical terms onto the other side. So minus 3 minus x minus 3 minus x. Okay, I hope you can see that right there. And what you end up is 2x minus 2 is equal to 2 times root x minus 1. Divide both everything by 2 because you can. Okay, so you end up with x minus 1 is equal to square root of x minus 1. And then square both sides. Again, freshman stream alert. So this end up being x squared minus 2x plus 1. That would be x minus 1. Um, minus x plus 1. Minus x plus 1. So you're going to have now um, x squared minus 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. So x, um, let's factor this thing, minus 2, x minus 1 equals 0, x equals 2, and x equals 1 are the possible answers. So you can see already that this question just took, um, you know, you had to be very careful. It takes a little while, but on the flip side, it said it just have the same principles that we did here. Isolate the radical, square it. Isolate the radical, square it. Okay. Now, um, now just check it. So, um, original equation, left hand side, uh, x equals two, and that would be square root of seven minus square root of 1 and that's not equal to 2 so it doesn't work okay <clears throat> and um, left hand side x equals 1 you get square root of 4 minus square root of 0 which is square root of 4 which is 2 and the right hand side you have 2 so that's the same thing so the only answer that works is x equals 1 so x equals 1 is the final answer So you may see some of those questions in the in the homework and all also probably in, in WebAssign and um, in in the exam as well. Uh, so let's uh, let's go quickly to a, a radical equation and I'm going to give you one of those easier ones. Uh, so click on the question on the left hand side of your screen. All right. So let's uh, let's look at how to solve absolute value equations. So now that I have everything here, um, a lot of things written in there, I would just write x squared minus 6. I'm going to rewrite that. And remember, absolute value would break apart to absolute without absolute value and then without absolute value but minus. So just remember that which means you have to break these apart to two quadratic equations. The first one would be without, just write it without absolute values. And the second one is write it without absolute values but with a negative sign. So you have equation number two and equation number one. So let's solve equation number one. So x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 0. x minus 3, x plus 2 is equal to 0. So x equals 3 and x equals negative 2. OK, and I just factored without just noticing it. So uh, right here, you can um, divide both sides by negative 1. So you get x squared minus 6 is equal to negative x. And that would be x squared plus x minus 6 equals 0. And that factors as x plus 3, x minus 2, 
is equal to 0, x equals negative 3, and x equals plus 2. So you can see there are four different possible answers. Remember, possible is the key here because you have to check it. Okay, and now the checking takes place four times. x equals 3, x equals negative 2, and x equals negative 3, and x equals 2. So, the original equation, always check in the original equation because that's that's what we need these numbers to satisfy. So when you plug in, in uh, x, plug in x equals 3 in the original equation, you can see on the left hand side you get square um, absolute value of 3 squared minus 6, which is absolute value of 9 minus 6, which is just 3. And that's left hand side. And on the right hand side, is 3. So they are the same. So this is good. Now x equals negative 2, you plug in on, on both sides uh, and one side you get negative 2 squared minus 6, so that would be absolute value of 4 minus 6, that is just 2. And on the right hand side, you just get negative 2. So they are not the same, so this is not the correct answer. And similarly, you will see this one have different left hand sides and right hand sides. Left hand side absolute value of negative 3 squared minus 6 that is negative 3 absolute value of plus 3 and you get 3 and on the right hand side you get negative 3 not the same so that goes off and here um, um, absolute value of uh, 2 squared minus 6 that is absolute value of 4 minus 6 that's just 2 and that's left hand side and the right hand side is Two. So that's good. So this is good. So you get x equals 3 and x equals 2 as your answers. Now one thing that might concern you is can you just discard the negative values? The answer is no. In this example it turned out that the negative values does not work but um, depending on the question uh, sometimes negative values might be the only things that works. So always remember check it. Without checking you cannot be sure about the answer. Alright, um, so uh, let us do an absolute value uh, equation. Um, so click the question on the right hand side of the left hand side of the screen and I hope you get the correct answer. Okay. Now, these questions might not be ones we discussed in class, but these are now we are going to discuss that, and you're going to see me how see me solving these questions, and then I might ask these questions, one of those questions in the exam. So, exam question alert. I might, I might not ask the question. So, okay. Now, these are called equations of quadrat quadratic form. Now, that means it looks like a quadratic equation, but not quite. A quadratic equation is a polynomial with degree 2. Now, this guy has degree 6, so it's not a quadratic equation. But if you do a correct substitution, you will end up with a quadratic equation. And by solving that quadratic equation, you can get... Um, you can solve this sixth degree equation. So looks like quadratic. That's what quadratic form means. Looks like quadratic. Okay. All right, guys. So let's uh, let's see how you do it. So right here. So how do we decide whether it looks like quadratic equation? Well, first of all, it has three terms. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3. And 1 is a constant. 1 is constant, constant, and a constant. Okay? And then one term is the square of the other term. So variable of one term 
variable of one so if you discard this constant term you get two other terms and variable of one of these terms is square of the other for example variable term x cubed and here x cubed squared is x6 again here the variable term is x to the power one third that squared gives you x to the power two thirds and the third one again you get the you get a similar situation okay now uh, let's see how you sort this so remember the correct way to solve is called u sub which means you will substitute a different variable for one of those variables usually it goes like this look at the exponent take the lesser one and make it u so here I look at the exponent lesser one that would be x cubed forget about the constant x cubed is equal to u <clears throat> okay now then you should definitely have when you square it you should get x to the power 6 so you can see when you square both sides you get x to the power 6 on here is equal to u squared so now in the original equation replace x to the power 6 by u squared and x to the power 3 by u so you should end up with 16 that was originally there instead of x to the power 6 I will write u squared plus 8 was already there instead of x to the power 3 I will write u and 1 was already there and that is 16 u squared plus 8 2 plus 1 is a quadratic equation in terms of u so now you can solve it okay so uh, I'm not gonna shall tell you how to factorize that you already know how to factor this it's 4 u plus 1 all thing squared you can do find factors of 16 and uh, that would add up to um, 8 or you can do a perfect square factorization either way you get 4u plus 1 is equal to 0 so 4u is equal to negative 1 so u is equal to negative 1 fourth but the problem here is that we did not have u in the original equation original equation had x we have u we there's no point of finding u without finding what is x so we go to the place where we had the original substitution that is this equation okay this is the original substitution part you go there and you have u equals negative one fourth you substitute it here so you get x cubed is equal to negative one fourth so take the square cube root of both sides and you get x is equal to cube root of negative one fourth or that would be negative cube root of one fourth we went over that in class or one of those past uh, lectures that you can do that with cube roots and that's the answer cube root of a uh, negative cube root of one fourth okay um all right so let's uh, let's do the next one as well so remember what to do pick the correct u sub and so here you would do a u sub look at the least exponent that would be one third okay not the least but numerically less okay if it was negative two thirds and negative one third still you would pick negative one third okay so here you would pick make that term that is x to the power one third is equal to u that is your original substitution so you might have to come back here when you find the solution okay 
that makes square both sides. So x to the power 2 thirds is equal to u squared. Now do the substitution. x to the power 2 thirds is equal to u squared minus 5 times x to the power 1 third is u plus 4 is equal to 0. Now you see a quadratic equation in terms of u. So you can solve it by factoring u minus 4 times u minus 1 is equal to 0. So you get u equals 4 and u equals 1. So now again go back to the place where you made the original substitution. That's right here. And put u equals 1. So when you put u equals 1 you get x to the power 1 third is equal to 1. Now you will have to cube both sides. So you get x equals 1. x equals 1 cubed which is 1. And this one again you will have to plug in here. So you get u equals 4. So x to the power 1 third is equal to u which is 4. Again cube both sides. You get x equals 4 to the power 3 which is 64. So you get two answers x equals 4 and x, x equals 1 and x equals 64. So again equation of quadratic form use uh, a lot of techniques that you learn for solving quadratic equations, uh, solving radical equations and then um, um, you know, substitution. So it's a very good exam question because it captures a lot of things that you know. Okay, so uh, you have a plenty, uh, you have a, you have several practice questions in the homework, um, and you will see some of some more of them in the in the web design homework. So the last one right here is this. I want to bring this 12 on the other side. So x minus 2 to the power 2 fifth plus x minus 2 to the power 1 fifth minus 12 is equal to 0. Now again look at the least power that is 1 fifth. So I'm going to make a u sub. Now it would be x minus 2 to the power 1 fifth will be equal to u. Okay and by squaring both sides again you get x minus 2 to the power 2 fifth is equal to u squared and then do the u substitution so you get u squared plus u minus 12 is equal to 0 factor u plus 4 u minus 3 is equal to 0 that works so you get u equals 3 and u equals negative 4 Okay, now remember where you made the original substitution right here. So you would plug in u equals 3 here. So u equals 3, you get x minus 2 to the power 1 fifth is equal to 3. So you get x minus 2 is equal to 3 to the power 5. So that would be 243 plus 2. So x is equal to 245. And then, uh, how about u equals negative 4? Um, again, plug that in here. So x minus 2 to the power 1 fifth is equal to negative 4. So x minus 2 is equal to negative 4 to the power 5. That is negative 1024. So x is equal to negative 1022. So there are two answers, 245 and negative 1022. Now the question do I have to check? It was originally a fifth root equation which means you don't have to check. Okay um, so um, I think uh, you understood how to solve equations of quadratic form. I'm going to put a very simple question on equations of quadratic form at the end of this lecture. 
with just like few moments and i hope this helped you in doing the homework questions so sorry about this long lecture but i hope this helps to save time when doing the homework finish the lecture by finishing the question at the end thank you